Spanish has the verbs ser and ir, which mean to be and to go. And even though these verbs have different definitions, the convenient thing about them is that they both share the same syntax when they're put into past simple or preterite tense in Spanish. The verb ser means to be, as in being and having traits about oneself, and the syntax of this verb in the present tense has six different conjugations for the six pronouns. The verb ir, however, means to go and sometimes can be referred to as to go to, but its syntax is completely different in the present tense from the verb ser. The two verbs in the past simple tense share the same syntax, which makes Spanish more convenient, having an irregular conjugation pattern, and so you can only tell the difference between them in context. Fui can simultaneously mean I went somewhere or to do something, or I was, as in actions that were completed in the past, and I'll get to that in a bit. Fuiste can mean you went somewhere or to do something, and also you were in a position somewhere. Fue can mean he or she went, and it also has a ubiquitous use of it was in Spanish, making it one of the most useful words in the past simple tense. Fuimos means we went or we were, fuisteis means y'all went or y'all were, and fueron can mean they went or they were. I recommend that you actually focus on all pronouns except vosotros and ellos because all of these conjugations are very useful in Spanish. As I said before, you can only tell the difference between said and ear in the past simple in context, and there's actually an easy way to distinguish their meaning, and that is through the preposition a, which is used as the preposition to in English. Just like when we say actions in the present, such as yo voy a la tienda, I go to the store, it's the same way you would say the phrase in the past. Yo fui a la tienda. I went to the store, which ultimately changes only one word, making the language easier to understand and easier to distinguish from the verb ser. In this context, we know that the verb is ir because we see the preposition a, which is placed only after conjugations of the verb ir, regardless if it's in the present or past. Yo voy a la tienda and yo fui a la tienda mean I go to the store and I went to the store, which simply changes only one word, noticeably understanding that ir is used because you have the preposition a after the conjugation in both cases. However, you can sometimes refer to actions like tu vas a hacer tu tarea, you go to do your homework, and if you want to put the phrase in the past, you simply change only one word by saying tu fuiste a hacer tu tarea, you went to do your homework. And in both cases, everything else in the sentence stays the same, besides the conjugation of ir, both in English and Spanish, and you can make more examples like ella fue al concerto ayer, she went to the concert yesterday, with ayer indicating that the action happened in the past, and also having al, which means to the, again knowing that it's the verb ir. You can also say a sentence like, fuimos a ver la fiesta, we went to see the party, and this sentence also has the preposition a inside, which refers to an action done in the past, once again, showing that the sentence contains the verb ir. The biggest tip that I can give for telling the difference between said and ir in the past simple is that if you see this conjugation and you don't know which one it is, try looking for the preposition a after the conjugation. If there is an a with or without an infinitive, the verb is ir because there isn't much of a change from its form in the present. Now, understanding how the verb said works in the past simple is actually a bit more difficult to comprehend due to its variations in the past. Currently, we're working in the past simple, also known as the preterite. And as I said in my previous video, Spanish has many variations of the past, such as the imperfect, conditional, and so on. However, what's important with the verb ser is that it's used in the past simple strictly for describing actions that specifically happened in the past. And I'm putting a very big emphasis on the word specifically, as I don't want to lie to any of you watching this video, I myself struggled with the verb ser in the past simple, but I can describe it in the easiest way possible. You might remember me explaining the verb said in one of my previous videos, where I described how the verb said works in the present form, part of which includes the following applications of said. You might be thinking that since these are the uses that are utilized for said in the present form, then they all have to be used in the past tense also. However, since I said that said is used in the past only for situations that were finished specifically and factually, this narrows the field of the verb being used in the past only to when, where, and how events took place, which can also be explained as events that happened or finished in the past. Suppose we have the phrase, la película fue aburrida, meaning the movie was boring. In this case, we have the use of fue, which indicates was, as in the movie was boring. Since a movie is an event that happened in the past and stayed in the past, the act of the sentence remains factual because of how was the movie. And since there is the word fue in the sentence, this shows you how fue is used more than the other conjugations of said. However, and this is something that I'll show rather than explain, if you take this phrase, the movie was boring, and plug it into a translator, it 
might give a translation that has the word era. While the translation of the sentence doesn't go away, the meaning is quite wrong about the phrase because era is the imperfect tense of ser of the it pronoun, meaning used to be. And it's actually a word that's used more often than fue, but the emphasis of this video is the past simple. Saying la película era aburrida means the movie used to be boring, which logically doesn't make sense, which is why fue has to be used, indicating how events took place in the past. Era is used more when it comes down to describing objects and people, but it's a topic for a future video. In this video, I just wanted to mention that so that you don't get confused about how to use ser in the past tense. Fue is by far the most common use of ser, used for the construction it was, like saying fue difícil hacer la prueba, it was difficult to study for the test, which can be said the same in the present tense by simply changing one word. Es difícil hacer la prueba, it is difficult to do the test. And you can also have simpler sentences, which are sentences that I recommend using the most, like la fuesta fue en el club, meaning the party was in the club, which is the easiest sentence that shows how ser is used perfectly and logically in the past by acting as an event that took place in the past and stayed in the past. In the video, I wanted to show how the verbs ser and ir work in Spanish by having the same syntax in the past simple tense and also being able to tell the difference between them in context. Of course, you can make any sentence that you want using ser and ir, but the biggest tip that I can give in order to tell the difference between them in context is that the verb ir means to go, and if you see the preposition a with or without an infinitive after it, then the verb has to be ir. Alongside, the verb ser means to be, and if you see a sentence that begins with the construction fue, meaning it was, or a sentence that has fue in it with an event that specifically finished in the past, then that verb is the verb ser in the past. If you want to, you can even practice on some of my sentences in the video and put them in English in order to see if you got them right. And if you did, then you did a good job. This has been the past tense of ser and ir in Spanish. Thank you for watching this video, and hopefully I made your learning just a bit simpler.